think everybody has these games where you play them at first and you don't really like them and you kind of just toss them to the side only t further down the road. You kind of wish you gave them a second chance. Maybe you get older, you maybe think about them and you kind of develop a certain appreciation for them that you wish you would have saw those games through. Or maybe even somebody's like come to you and like, kind of giving you a new appreciation for it. Yeah, like, maybe, oh, maybe I should go back and play Yeah, maybe they had a certain perspective on the game that you never really had. And you like, did that for me with uh, Sui Coden 3. I wanted nothing to do with that game when I first played it, and then once you talked me into it, I went back and just destroyed oh, that game. Fucking Sui got Coden 100 3. Got 100% Yeah, game. what a great game. But this video is going to be about games that deserve a second chance and the games that we feel like, not not for everybody, but for us personally, games that we've kind of, left behind that we didn't really play that we wish we would have or that we kind of want to go back and actually see through to the end. Yeah. And uh, the first one that pops in my head for me is Wild Arms 3. I loved Wild Arms 1. Uh, Wild Arms 2 was actually really cool too. But when it came to Wild Arms 3, something about that um, Wild West aesthetic really just turned me off. And there were certain uh, there were certain game mechanics that were in place that I really didn't like. And, uh, but now as I've gotten older and me and you have talked about it and certain, you know, dungeons and things that you could do in it, I kind of wish – I kind of want to go back and actually play it through because I think I have kind of have a different perspective on it now. And, I w you know, I, I would like to kind of, you know, go try it out, you know, and see, see what it's all about. Um, what do you got? Uh, for me, mine would be my pitfall, the one that got away, my great white buffalo. Would be well. I don't even want to go that far. I wouldn't say it's that, but it's uh, Breath of Fire Five Dragon Quarter for the PlayStation Two. Prime. Like there were so many things about that game that I love: the music, the story. You know, the, there are so many things. They definitely I did. They they definitely uh, aesthetic wise, uh, in the way they told the story, was a lot different than the other Breath of Fires. Yeah, I know. But like I played that game, but the, and the thing is, is I. It, you can get why it's basically you just traveling down a hallway. The battle system was based off an AP system where you burned it up every time you moved or did an attack and stuff like that. It was it was a grind. It was a serious right. grind. And not only that, it was built from the ground up that you were gonna have to play it multiple times to unlock the entire story. Huh. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I me I remember that one. That one. But that one is not really on my list. I just didn't like the way they kind of forced you to play that game multiple times. I don't like JRPGs that try and make me play them multiple times. Yeah. But like I said, I was big into the story and the aesthetics and stuff like that. So there was a lot of things that I missed out on just because I, you know, only went through it, you know, one time. And even when I did, I'm embarrassed to admit this, but back in the day they used to have the, you know, the cheat disc and stuff that you could use and I didn't wait, I didn't have the attention wait, span. You're, you're a cheater? Yeah. I know. And you the thing is that fucking communist. I burned I burned through <laughs> one playthrough of that game and I used cheats to get through it. I got to the end of it and there's this message that the developers put at the end of it where they're just like, you know, we love what we do. We're really passionate about you know, this series. We, we've we been trying to do a lot with it and stuff like that. And I read it and got to the end of it and I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't just cheat myself. I cheated you. I'm sorry. Developers of Breath of Fire 5. <laughs> we have a fucking wolf in sheep's clothing yeah, over you're here. You're a phony. You're I was like, I was just like I'm sorry. Phony. I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys heard it here first, Lee's a phony. Yeah. I read that message. I st I don't use cheats to this day. Even with Grand Theft Auto and stuff like that, stuff that's coded into the game, I don't do it anymore. Yeah. I feel like if you're a serious gamer and you want to appreciate what the game is and all its context, like, you don't do that. You play it with, you know. Yeah. There's a sense of achievement in yeah. actually doing the hard shit. So that was that was one of mine is that I always wanted to go back okay. and actually give it a I time can, of day. I, I could see that. So I think my next one is a game called Beyond the Beyond. It was one of the first JRPGs released on the PlayStation One, and um, my friend my friend Jason, well, we always talk about this game, and he would probably give me some shit for talking about this, but uh, I I I kind of want to go back and finish that one, and. Uh, we talk about how much it sucks and all the weird shit about it, but uh, now that I have gotten older and like seen how the JRPG market has changed, I kind of developed a new appreciation for it. Uh, one of the biggest things about Beyond the Beyond is you get this guy named Samson, who is actually pretty powerful. The game's hard. Beyond the Beyond's tough. And um, 
but why you have him for the longest time. I don't even know if I got to the point where you get rid of it, but he's cursed. This witch curses him, and this curse does all kinds of funky things. Sometimes he'll attack. A lot of times he won't do shit. Sometimes he might fucking get hurt, and, like, sometimes he'll attack, and the damage will go on him. And he's just like this – he's just huge liability for the <laughs> longest time. And But what I liked about it now – what I what I appreciate about it now is that you spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to cure this curse on this guy. And I think that's really cool in the JRPG market because a lot most JRPGs are all about saving the world and you know doing this and that and it's always like these huge overarching stories that like you know they're always larger than yourself. And it was really cool to see something where it was very personal and very grounded. You weren't out trying to save the world. You're like, dude, this guy's cursed, and we got to figure this out, you know. And th they go on this journey just to fucking figure out this curse, yeah. you know. And, and it would be like, uh, you know, and I felt that that's a lot more grounded than most games, especially at its time. And I don't remember if the whole story, maybe, maybe the whole story ends up revolving around saving the world. So for the long, I'm talking about, dude, it was a long time that you're traveling around trying to figure out this guy's curse. And it was just brutal to deal with. But uh, I do, I do kind of want to go back and play Beyond the Beyond because I think it was, uh, it, it, it was definitely a good game. And I gave it a lot of shit. And a lot of critics gave it a lot of shit too. Yeah. You know? So it would be nice to kind of go back and uh, try and polish that one off. Yeah, I think if I had to choose another one, my other one would probably be uh, would be uh, Fallout New Vegas. I didn't like it when it came out. It was it just seemed like a cheap clone of three. It was made by you know a different developer and stuff like that. It was kind of cartoony. It didn't have the edge that Fallout Three had and stuff like that. Right. But uh, honestly, what what did it in was uh, you know when April was talking about the DLC and stuff like that, and that was like one of her favorites. Like. It, yeah, and I think it was Blood Money. She said it was really dark. Yeah, which is so bizarre to me because I, I just there and I've I've attempted to try and give that game the time of day multiple times, and I just cannot get past like all the broken elements with it. The, you know, the cheap, you know, factions and stuff like that. Right. You know, you can choose to be liked by these outcast factions, but in reality, if they don't like you, you can't shop in towns and shit like that. Like there were so many things that were broken about it. But uh, there's other things that I hear from other people who have actually given it the time of day that they just love it. And that's one of those games that I always wanted to go. Yeah, back I mean, New Vegas is is very uh, well received, especially if you look on like Steam reviews, stuff like that. It's got really good reviews. Yeah. And uh, I, I think for me with Fallout New Vegas was I don't like the whole uh, 1950s Vegas aesthetic. Like that's never been my thing. And so that's always hard to get past. But you're right. April brings up the DLCs like Blood Money talks about uh, how dark it was. And I'm like, fuck, I actually kind of want to go through and And she them. knows Fallout, so oh, she yeah. says it, it yeah, is. Yeah. Like, yeah. A April, uh, April, I will mention her from time to time on the channel. She's my fiance. Uh, she, I wouldn't really call her a gamer per se. Um, she doesn't play games, but she plays the absolute fucking shit. <sighs> Out of Bethesda games, and that still is an understatement. No, yeah, that, we're, we're not talking about like two hundred hours. Dude, this girl has got probably a thousand hours in Skyrim, a thousand hours in Fallout Four. She is our grandmaster when it comes to Bethesda open world RPGs. Yeah. She knows everything about those games. It's just her thing. But uh, yeah, a New Vegas is a good one. I I kind of wish I, I kind of wish I'd go back and. Uh, Try that one. And the longer I wait to do it, the, like, the, the less likely it becomes. Yeah, you know what I mean? exactly, exactly. But uh, we want to hear from you guys. Uh, let us know what kind of games you kind of want to give a second chance because we, we're really curious. Or maybe, yeah, you maybe know, even ones that you missed out on that you yeah, hear about other people talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, we don't, pl we don't get to get I – mean, we get, try and play as much as we can, but there's, you know, w there's games that we don't even know that exist out there, and so we always like to hear from people and – hear you know different perspectives anyways like subscribe share youtube stuff we're out